In this video, we're going to discuss a method for solving systems of linear equations. So this is the um, outline of the chapter, and you see um, here we're going to be focusing on iterative methods to solve linear systems. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on the Jacobi method. So in the previous section, we introduced methods that produce an exact solution for the linear system AX equals B. These methods relied on exactly solving the set of equations. There are other numerical techniques that involve iterative methods. These are similar to the iterative or open methods to find roots of equations in a single variable that we studied in chapter 4. When n is relatively large, or the size of the matrix is relatively large, or when the matrix is banded, the iterative methods can be more efficient than the direct methods for linear systems. So let's talk about the Jacobi method. The Jacobi method is akin to the fixed point iteration method for a single variable. Recall, in the case of one variable, we reformulated our problem. So instead of saying f of x was equal to 0, the equation was rewritten as x is equal to g of x. Now in the case of vectors, instead of saying ax is equal to b, the system is rewritten as x is equal to c plus m times x, where c is a vector in Rn and m is an n by n matrix, or in the set mn, where mn here denotes the set of n by n matrices. So you can see that similar to the fixed point iteration formulation, x appears on both sides of the equation. So consider a linear system ax is equal to b. The left hand side, ax, can be decomposed as shown here. Where this matrix we can call r, and this matrix we can call d. So we have rx plus dx is equal to b where a is equal to r plus d. So let's take a look at these in a little bit more detail. r has zero entries on the diagonal components, so all of these components are equal to zero, and d is a diagonal matrix, so the diagonal components are the only non-zero components. So basically what we've done is taken, when we start with our matrix a, we take all the diagonal components and make our diagonal matrix d, and then everything else that's left becomes R. So if our original matrix A has non-zero entries on the diagonal, then our matrix D has also has non-zero entries on the diagonal and can be easily inverted. So the inverse of D is shown here, where the diagonal components are A1, 1 over A11, 1, 1, 1 over A22, etc., up to 1 over ANN. So what we've done here with the Jacobi method is we start with our system ax equals b, we write a as the sum of r plus d, so then our system can be written as rx plus dx is equal to b. Then we can bring the rx to the other side of the equation, and since d can be easily inverted, we can solve our system to see, say that x is equal to d inverse times b minus rx, where d is the in, d inverse is shown here. So this is the form of the Jacobi method, and then we will iterate um, to find our solution x. So this form is similar to the fixed point iteration method, as you can see. We assume an initial guess for the components of the vector x and substitute those into the right hand side, so into this side here, and from that a new estimate for the components of x can be computed, which becomes this x here. So we said that for this method to work, the original matrix A has to have non-zero diagonal components, so in addition to that there are other requirements for the matrix D inverse R for this method to converge to a proper solution. And this idea is analogous to the convergence criteria that we talked about for the fixed point iteration method, but the details are beyond the scope of this course. One fact that is useful is that the method will converge if the diagonal components of A are large compared to the rest of the matrix components, 
which we would call diagonally dominant. And we'll see a little bit more about this when we talk about the convergence of both the Jacobi and the Gauss-Seidel methods. So the stopping criteria is based on the size of the norm of the difference between the vector x in the current and the previous iterations. So in the case of one variable, at each iteration we obtain a new estimate for x. So we start with x0 and then we get x1, x2, x3, x4, etc. up to xi. And the iterations are performed until the absolute value of epsilon r is less than or equal to epsilon s, where epsilon r is our current estimate xi minus our previous estimate xi minus 1 divided by our current x estimate. And epsilon s is some specified threshold, uh, error threshold. So now in the case of vectors, at each iteration we obtain a new estimate for our vector x. So x0 is our initial estimate. We start with this um, vector x that has n components. And then at x1, we get a new vector x that again has n components. And at our current estimate xi, we get a new vector x that has n components. So now the iterations are performed until epsilon r is less than or equal to epsilon s, where here epsilon r is defined as shown here, which is the norm of xi minus xi minus 1 divided by the norm of xi. So these double vertical brackets here denote the norm of the vector, and any norm function can be used, and here we will use the Euclidean norm. So the Euclidean norm of xi minus xi minus 1 is given as shown here. It's the square root of the sum of the squares of the difference in the components. And the norm of xi is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So let's see an example. Consider the system ax equals b defined as shown here. We want to find the solution x to the system using the Jacobi method with an error threshold of epsilon s is equal to 0 0.0001 and an initial guess x0 is 111. So again, this is our system ax equals b. We first rearrange the system to the form x is equal to d inverse times b minus rx. So r is, we, we start with a and then put zeros along the diagonal and keep everything else. d is only the diagonal components of a and everything else is zero. And d inverse is just the inverse of d. So the diagonal components are one over the um, diagonal components of D. So 1 over 3, 1 over 7, and 1 over 10. So now our system is shown in, the, in this form here, x is equal to D inverse times B minus Rx. Now we want to use our initial guess x0 to calculate the new estimate x1. So here you can see our new estimate x1 is equal to D inverse times b minus r, and now this is our initial estimate x0. So we can plug in our estimate for our initial guess x0 and perform this um, matrix operation, and we get our new estimate x1 as shown here. So then we calculate the relative approximate error using our definition with the norm. So our relative approximate error for this iteration is shown here. So you can see the components of our new estimate minus our old estimate, our new estimate minus our old estimate, our new estimate minus our old estimate, our estimate, our old estimate divided by the new estimate. So this is equal to 0 0.9104, which is larger than our epsilon s, so we increment the counter and continue. So now we're going to put um, x1 here, and we're going to find x2. 
So I prepared a MATLAB script to, or a MATLAB function to perform this, and um, with the A and B and X0 defined in this example, uh, this is the output for each iteration. So the format of the output here is the iteration numbers are shown in the first column. And then for each iteration, these are the estimates of X. So it's written sort of as X transpose. So that's my X0, my X1, my X2, etc. And then the last column here shows my ER or my uh, epsilon r at each iteration. So in four iterations, the method converged with our specified threshold, and we found that the solution was uh, 3, minus 2.5, and 7. So that concludes the description of the Jacobi method for solving linear systems of equations.